Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Raise your hand if you have ever wasted hours chasing down dynamic session IDs or CSRF tokens in JMeter. Yeah, it's painful, right? Well, what if I told you there is a plugin that does all of that heavy lifting for you? Today, I will walk you through BlazeMeter's auto correlation recorder in a step-by-step -step manner. By the end of this video, you will never look at the correlation the same way again. Let's try to understand what exactly is the autocorrelation recorder. Think of it as a JMeter recorder, but with superpowers. Instead of you digging through the responses and manually writing the regex or JSON extractors, the plugin actually watches your recording, detects the dynamic values, and suggests the correlation rules for you. What you need to do is to just review, click apply, and then boom your JMeter will build the extractors automatically. That means less guesswork, fewer failed tests, and way more time for the fun stuff. All right, before the magic happens, let's get the basic setup. Open JMeter on your machine, then go to the Plugins Manager, and go to the available plugins. Search here with the name Auto Correlation. There you will find the first plugin called Auto Correlation Recorder plugin. Select this checkbox and then click on Apply Changes and Restart JMeter. If you do this, then automatically this Auto Correlation Recorder plugin is going to be installed on your JMeter. Let's wait till it is going to restart. Once the restart got completed, then you will see that particular element under the non-test script recorder. Now the JMeter restart got completed. Let's verify whether that plugin got installed successfully or not. In order to verify that, go to the test plan, right click on that, go to the add and go to the non-test elements. There you will see the BZM autocorrelation recorder. So this is the recorder that we are discussing about. Now you may get doubt like, Already we have a HTTPS test script recorder. Then what is the use of this autocorrelation recorder? Let's try to understand the difference. Let's go to the PPT. And here you can observe the first image is related to the HTTPS test script recorder element. And the second one is related to the autocorrelation recorder element. If you observe, there won't be any major difference between the both. The only difference that you are going to see here is the correlation tab that is available in the auto correlation recorder. This is the one which is going to help us to do the auto correlation process in JMeter. Let's see how we can work with this auto correlation recorder. As a part of this demo, I'll consider a simple scenario from the Nopcommerce application wherein the user is going to launch the application first and then he's going to log in into the application and then he will log out of the application. Let's try to record this particular flow with the help of the autocorrelation recorder. Just go to the JMeter and go to the templates and try to select the BZM autocorrelation recorder template here. Make a note here that this template is not going to be available till you are going to install the BlazeMeter autocorrelation recorder plugin. Just select this particular template and click on create. Once if you click on create, automatically all the required elements for the recording purpose is going to be added here. And here you can clearly see under the thread group, we have one recording controller and instead of the normal HTTPS test script recorder, now the BlazeMeter autocorrelation recorder got added here and it's disabled right now. So let's enable it, okay? And try to record the flow with the help of this BlazeMeter autocorrelation recorder. Let's start the recording process by turning on the proxy server. Go to proxy server settings and turn on the proxy server and click on the save button. Make sure to provide the same port number in JMeter. Just go to JMeter and under the autocorrelation recorder, provide the port number as 7777 and click on start the recording process. Now provide the transaction name as launch 
and go to the browser and copy and paste the URL on the browser. Now launch transaction got recorded successfully. As a next step, I need to record the login transaction. So just provide the transaction name as login and click on the login button here and provide the registered email ID and password over here. I'm just providing the details. Once after providing the details, click on login button so that the user is going to login into the application. Now, as a last step, I need to do logout. So I'm just providing the transaction name as logout and then I'm clicking on logout button. With this, I recorded all the three transactions of this particular scenario. Let's click on stop. Once after clicking on stop, you will get one pop up here. Okay, which is asking to start the detection of dynamic values for auto correlation purpose. Here we have two options. Okay, if you want to, if you want your JMeter to automatically replay your script and uh, try to identify what are all the correlations that are, what are all the dynamic values that are available, then you can just click on yes. If not, if you want to do it manually on your own, just click on no. But now I'll go with the option called S. Once if you click on S, your JMeter will replay this particular uh, test plan on the back end and then it is going to provide the result. After replaying the test plan, you can see here 12 requests got failed. We'll try to regenerate the correlation sessions to fix them. It is asking like, do you want to continue? Just click on yes. Once if you click on yes, you will get two options here. One is the existing correlation template option and the second one is the automatic comparison and variable detection option. So we need to select one of these two options. If you have any existing correlation templates and you want to add this particular uh, value to that existing correlation template, then you need to select this first option. Otherwise, go with the second option, automatic comparison and variable detection option, and then click on continue. Once if you click on continue, it is going to provide you all the suggestions here. Let's try to see what are all the suggestions that it has provided, okay? So it has provided a lot of suggestions here. Out of all the suggestions, which suggestions are useful for us, we should consider only that particular suggestion. Okay, uh, let's try to understand which suggestion is useful for us. So in order to uh, understand that, let's click on this select none option so that all the checkboxes are going to be unchecked. And as a part of this application, uh, I clearly know that the login transaction is going to fail. Why? Because under the login transaction, we have a dynamic value called request verification token. That dynamic value need to be handled properly. Otherwise, this particular scenario will fail, especially the login transaction will fail. So just search for the request verification token dynamic value over here. In the auto-generated suggestions, just uncheck all and then just scroll down and search for the request verification token. Here you can see this is the request verification token line. Okay. And this is there under the login request. Just select this particular checkbox and then click on apply. Once if you click on apply, then automatically it is going to apply that particular autocorrelation part for this dynamic value called request verification token. And you can see the message called the suggestions were applied successfully to your test plan. Please review the changes and when you are ready, replay the script to view the results. Okay, just click on OK here. Once after clicking on OK, now just go to that particular transaction and verify whether that particular dynamic value is correlated properly or not. Now let's go to the login transaction and go to the request where we have the dynamic value. Here you can see that this dynamic value got correlated automatically. And if you go to the above request and if you expand it, you can clearly see that your autocorrelation recorder has automatically added one regular expression extractor and it has created the regular expression for us. And that particular 
created variable is passed as a parameter in the next step wherever that dynamic value is there. Now, if you run this particular script, then your script is going to pass. Let's validate the script and see whether all the transactions are going to pass or fail. If you see here, all the three transactions, launch, login, and logout got passed successfully. That is the use of autocorrelation recorder. In this video, we have seen how to do the autocorrelation in JMeter with the help of uh, autocorrelation recorder. And in the next video, uh, we'll see what happens uh, if we are going to click the no button under the correlation wizard. And also we'll see how to do the autocorrelation process uh, with the help of the correlation tab that is uh, available under the autocorrelation recorder. And we'll see each and every uh, option in a detailed way. If you feel like this video is helpful for you, please like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to share this video with your friends. Thank you.